here we are. Here we are with a very special guest of the very secret plan. It could be the first guest, the guest that launches the whole idea into the world. No, what are you talking about? We haven't met in what, 15 years and you <laughs> want to <laughs> regularly to record. I was like writing stupid little numbers because he wouldn't be allow me to copy directly from Messenger. It was so silly. <laughs> Has it been 15 years? No, but like, Who's let's calculate. Oof, where, um, I moved out of Mexico in 2013. So that means that you and I were probably more constant in our relationship around 2012. Wow, so eight years. A lot can happen in eight years. A lot have, has happened in eight years. <laughs> so I, I'd like to do a bit of an interview of you to discover what you've been through and what you've learned and uh, what's what's happening and, and where did you, your vision take you? Because we were both sort of in mid stride of what we're working on. And uh, looks like you've made a lot of progress. And uh, I'm not sure if I have or not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> according to what metrics elijah exactly what are the metrics of that kind of a progress that one makes in life well i'd like to probably say completed projects <laughs> and well uh, then then it's not my real metric starting projects i'm good at that <laughs> uh -oh. I don't know if there would be complete considered completed. They're all like startups wanting to, you know, like carrying carrying rocks up the mountain <laughs> in the hope sometime we can roll them down and it just crashes capitalism in its way down. <laughs> well, that's quite a, a good metaphor. Um, perhaps perhaps you can speak about some of the rocks you've been rolling up. I, I know currency has been a very strong focus for you? Well, it's, you know, I was playing with Village Lab and we started Village Lab and Village Lab was a lot of joy for me because it was like the first project. I realized I was going, I was me, you know, me playing and not me behind a white male uh, like I did with with uh, Jean-Francois in the Transitioner or the Collective Intelligence Research Institute, as I did with other men before that. And um, village, in Village Lab, Jeff Clearwater really gave me a lot of, of creative freedom that I could have taken before, but I didn't. And um, for many multiple reasons. And, and um, that was very good for a couple of years and then Village Lab was supporting the Metacurrency project and we brought the first investment for our little project called Holo. And Holo.host is a peer-to-peer -peer hosting network. It's carrying its own stones up the mountain. I'm not carrying those stones anymore, um, but I did launch that, launch a cryptocurrency with them and it was a successful fundraise. Um, and then all the learning began. And, you know, it's what, it was one of those vessels where, where if you see the vessel, it looks like a shiny story of the heroes going in their vessel to the new land. And then meanwhile in the vessel, right? <laughs> Legs rolling, heads, hair, <laughs> noses, you know, <laughs> every possible point of pain um, happening. <laughs> and uh, I think it reached the balance right now as a vessel, uh, but it's still not successful i mean it's successful in the sense that it has a currency called hot and it's a cryptocurrency that has supported all the backbone of everything else that i'm doing that's where the money has been coming from so that's fantastic but it's still launching a speculative currency in with the same rules old rules that apply to all the different tokens that exist so that doesn't make us 
thrilled, but it's like using money to transform it into something else. So that we're thrilled about. Otherwise, you know, but what is a big steep of wanting to fundraise for a project and keeping the integrity and the impeccability, the coherence of the project doesn't match the venture capitalist mindset. Can I just ask a question about the, the rules of the tokens and maybe go into depth about that a little bit about what you mean? Yeah. As a restriction or what happened with you? Yeah. Yes. And meanwhile, I'm watching these two lizards. I have these beautiful geckos here in Hawaii. They're like green and red and yellow and blue. And there's a female gecko and a male gecko. I think it's pursuing. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit watching the scene, the love scene here. <laughs> well, it's always to know who, it's good to know who your competition is in terms of attention. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know about you too. We can I, record no, no, we, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you some stuff, but let me okay, I want to okay. dive into what you've done. Okay, okay, and okay. Then, Let's I'll, dive in. Uh, it's good to see you, Elijah. Yeah, it's great to see you. If anything, the years fit you. Mm. Well, so that's 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 a good measure, isn't it? Again, on the outside, if we look on the inside, it's it, it may be a different thing, but I I feel like at least today it's uh, today's good. This this moment is good, and uh, we must be appreciative of that. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll move out of Morpheus Morpheus land because I feel I felt like we both took the pill. And yeah, maybe, we did. We did take the pill and maybe sort of change the landscape just a little bit. But yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I still want to link into because I think it's important in terms of just the the relationship of you. You went through the process. You got the cryptocurrency. Yeah. You, you, you you've been working with currency, but it, it still may not be in alignment with what you actually are trying to do. Kind of, no. I mean, and let me tell you the story. So we did launch a cryptocurrency with the rules of Ethereum, you know, ERC-20 tokens. You have Bitcoin and Ethers, and ETH are the two main cryptos. And then Ethereum is the main technology for most of the other altcoins, they call them, out there. And they are called ERC-20 tokens. So what we launch is an ERC-20 token. So we, we launched uh, our initial coin offering mm -hmm. right at the time where, where the regulations were coming. So it was the feeling of this bubble, like huge bubble of everybody mm -hmm. like raising stupid amounts of money, like a hundred million in a week, you know, with, with projects that right now, I don't know where they are, you know? And, and in that moment, we, we kind of, did, we said, we should do this. We should ride that way because this is what happens to me in life. It's like, oh, there comes a wave. Oh, there goes the wave. Oh, everybody else is making a lot of progress in their lives. Huh. <laughs> you, <laughs> Story you, of my life. I thought that was my spot in the room. <laughs> we might be watching the same sunset, you and I. It's just like the waves just go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I, and you're seeing the way way before everybody else sees it right that's the most ridiculous part it's well, like because it's coming straight at you you're, you're seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are surfing it and some and you're warning people you're telling people we're coming but they don't listen much yeah they don't so anyways we we pass right in the when the regulations were about to come all the way to where the the lawyers had already reviewed everything all our papers and they were not giving us a go and we said we should press go with lawyers or not lawyers because we have everything and lawyers are very likely not to give you a go for a crypto because they don't want the liability so we said we should go and we fundraised 28 million dollars in a, in a month but then those $20 million were raised in ethers. And in a month, it crashed, the market crashed, the bubble burst. And those 28 millions became nine or 10, something like that. Still juicy, you know, still enough to rocket launch us. And everybody in the team went, get, got paid really well. Everybody in the team had 
I mean, for a year we were making like a thousand dollars. Everyone, no, it doesn't matter where in the in the hierarchy you are, you will be making a thousand dollars. And that was a year, and we went to but Porto. Thousand dollars? What do you mean? A day? A month? A year? Uh, no, we were making a one thousand one thousand dollars a month before a month. the race. Before the race, you know, okay. we were making that was like because we raised Village Lab raised for meta currency project and to raise hollow like two hundred thousand dollars so we needed to keep take care of that money and so we raised what we could and and we lived with that with a team in form in formation and um anyways there's a lot of stories there to tell but that part of the crypto is that then we are currency designers, so we know better. We know how to design currencies that are asset backed and not speculative. So that's what we're doing now. And we've been doing that before the cryptocurrency, right? With community currencies and currencies for, for, for management of feature, fisheries or other things. And um, right now we're getting stronger in that path because it's needed and more people are looking into it. Like a few years ago, you would say cryptocurrency, well, a few, 50 years before Bitcoin, and they wouldn't know. Um, but right now that it becomes a token or a cryptocurrency. And for us, that's not a currency. For us, a currency is like a flow. It's like a currency. It's a way to see a flow. So for us, it's, it's, it's based upon nature is based upon what makes living system be alive like if the flows in your body stop working bye bye you get sick or you're gone and the same with nature and so what are we doing with the flows in nature we cutting them we're not allowing the full circle of nature to take care of nature and so we're disrupting the flow so flows are really important for us are the kind of basis of our of our design are the drivers of our design. Um, and right now, after Holo was successful, then we had the backbone. I worked there a little. Um, it was incredible. I was like, my finances life has never been like, whoa, I'm expensive. I can do anything I want, especially with a girl, right? Being a only um, single mother. Um, and and that was amazing. And I was just like, wow, all this financial abundance was super new to me, super new to me. So I, it was, it's been good, it's been good. I was all able to invest in a couple of projects and um, you know, give money to friends and get a very nice house for my daughter and I, um, give her the main room, you know, as she was in her teens and growing out of the of um, getting stronger and, and 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 growing kind of she needed that nest and it was amazing and then art brock and eric harris brown who are the main founders of all on follow chain uh, said well i think you you don't have anything to do here your grandmother then you know i'm grandmother in the project uh, because of the ages I have of supporting them and being follower number one and the only woman for about 10 years. And then um, they said, why don't you go open the commons engine, which is the dream that we all have because technology means nothing. You see, we can do anything for people. And so I went and opened the commons engine with two friends, with two women. And so it was special because it's a tech company founded by women and what, so the, we the commons what engine commons engine oh, wow. commons engine what a great name yeah so commons engine has been alive for the last almost two years i think not two years we had our our second birthday or was it our first birthday i get lost no it was our first birthday oh my god it's it's just so in August. So we've been around in just a little while, but we depended where our reason to exist is to help create tech, uh, hollow chain based um, technologies for the commons, food, water, land, energy, governance, um, you name it, and currency design. And because hollow chain hasn't been ready to do anything with, that was like 
wanting to, you know, make burgers without having the the bread <laughs> and she's going like ah, okay we can network all you want but we don't have anything to help these people to build their technology with what if, what if you speed up and and holochain had to go in it, it's not easy to build a decentralized technology all everything changes um you know this is a dlt it's a distributed layer but it's not a block it's a chain it's a it's a, not a chain it's a, a table a hash table it operates in totally different rules so it's not like blockchain at all it's a totally different puppy and it's based upon agent centric capacity sovereignty for individuals but also for the commons you know we call it mutual sovereignty because you can be sovereign and you can choose your own rules for these communities to choose their own rules and then you cannot temper with the data it has data integrity and it has other affordances that allow it to be extremely good for anti-corruption and to not be tempered with and for data integrity and other other things so it's a great tech it's a great tech it's faster than the blockchain it doesn't it doesn't operate by consensus again our inspiration is nature you don't see consensus in nature you don't see uh that kind of um unnecessary redundancy when there's redundancy in nature is probably the best redundancy but not that one not of consensus um so um i start we started to work on currency design can I just ask one thing in there? So yeah. there's the two types of blockchain is more consensus and what you're saying is is more rules based by whoever creates the rules within that context. Yeah. So you come into yeah, a system into a into the rules already rather than everyone having to agree on the rules kind of thing. You agree on the well yeah cat no no let me explain a little better because consensus is a deceiving word in when you use it for the blockchain because it's not what we understand by consensus when we talk about governance systems okay. you know consensus in the blockchain has to do with every node knowing what all the nodes are doing so whenever there's a transaction if that transaction every node has to know that it happened so imagine the millions of transactions that have to happen and that makes it unscalable it makes it redundant and it's not necessary mm. so it's not about the agreements of the people it's about the the mechanics of the technology you know and that, the data that, flow yes so the data has to be checked check 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 by every note well in, in color change you don't you and i can be making our agreements in between us and communicating between us without the whole network not having to know and a small group can do their own agreements can decide well you know if you we have these social agreements and if you uh violate them then you get a slap in the hand or you get out of our circle or you pay a fine or whatever rules you want. I mean, whatever agreements community wants to do, those are the, the agreements that you can um, embed in the technology and have that technology support you. Uh, but that's a different thing than the networking capacity and how the our version of that, everybody knows has to know everything every node has to know what every node is doing mm -hmm. is what we call gossip which is a, um, one machine tells the other and tells the other and tells the other so that supports the data integrity but isn't it also the distinction between almost private and public you can have exactly you can have with holochain you can have public fully public or you can have private you can you don't need to consensus to do it public okay just just access points yeah yeah it's just it's just not cannot scale because if you think about every cell in your body having to check with every cell in your body what every cell is doing that is not intelligent coordination mm. and it just creates a lot of the energy in the body imagine the body having to do that it would be tired all the time it has so much computing capacity mm. so it doesn't do that right so holochain um it's a distributed layer technology that really surpasses that of its predecessor it's not even can compare with the blockchain and it's an open source technology that's what we 
we build it for to be open source and free for everyone. And Holo is a financial backbone. Holo is a peer-to-peer -peer hosting network so that we all can host the internet together so that we can get out of the social dilemma of big corporations owning our data because it's built on Holochain. I can send you great articles about uh, on enclosable systems versus closable, enclosable systems, which is what, what makes a system safe and uncorruptible is enclosability on unenclosability. So if you think about the speech, it's unenclosable. Like the only way that that you can stop somebody to talk to someone is you start gelling or you put yourself in the middle, like air is an unenclosable carrier, you know, but then we invented writing and write could be unenclosable, but it's enclosable because you can kidnap the, the carrier, air miss, you know, and then you get the mail yourself or, you know, and the internet was made, made, meant to be an unenclosable, but then the big networks enclosed it to make it centralized and to make it and their own. So they totally enclosed it. It was not what Tim Berners-Lee had conceived. So, you know, they on, they enclosed it. And what we need to do is unenclose it so that, that it could be truly democratized and decentralized. Otherwise it's not, it, it, it won't go there. So that's the biggest distinction in technology really right today. Yes. So now I guess bring that into your um, your company that you created and what you're doing with the commons engines? Yeah, the commons engine with like without an S. So it's um, because we were waiting for a holochain. What we did is a lot of currency design um, teaching. So we did a master class of 10 weeks. We did um, a uh, self-based uh, workshop. We did consulting. We've been helping people to design their currencies. We work with the other company. Well, work with <coughs> Unified Field Corporation and Just One Organics, and and we started to design a food back asset backed currency based backed on food uh, with them. Uh, we've been doing a lot of relationships with little projects, helping them to to ground so that when Holochain was to be ready, then we could be you know, accelerating their growth, uh, which is part of why we exist as a commons engine. And so now we can start doing that, but because commons engine, one of the, is very small and during its life, the three women, the two directors, me and Jean Russell, we had a crash. And so we were not able to really direct both of us. We were pulling to different, our core beliefs were very different. We didn't find the right alignment to continue. And she wanted to quit. She wanted to have a sabbatical and, you know, and, and we love each other. I, I love Jean, I respect her so much. She's a wonderful, intelligent, smart, funny, loving woman. And um, so we parted ways and I stayed you know, with the common engine and, and then Corona hit. And so Corona depleted my resources like that a lot of my resources and um because i was given um money from from a foundation called coventina foundation that gave me money to to start the common engine because our mission cannot be fulfilled by selling services i i do not do business development in terms of my own common engine business development i don't go out looking for projects that pay me money I'm here to serve. So the only way to serve is if, if I'm financed by somebody else. <laughs> so I got financed. Can I ask you why? Like what, why couldn't you have a, a business model that's sustainable that where you charge money to do that? Well, I charge money for the currency deep workshop. We made like $30,000. So we, we can do that. And the self-paced workshop makes money every month. So I have that. I have that and I can sell. I have several proposals out there in the world that could make money. Like I have a proposal for Maui County for a currency design and, and uh, but I have to, you know, it's like, um, it's, it's a lot of energy to go and present yourself and convince people and prepare proposals and understand their problem and then write them a proposal and then go and serve them and then they pay you and you know of course I can do that that business model I I don't the business model is easy it's consulting 
you know that's a business model that's easy mm. what i'm not doing is going out and fetching projects i'm not so going out why don't you get sales. a sales why don't you get a salesperson i could i could get a salesperson but i it has to be commons oriented projects so what happens is that um I mean, as I build capacity moving further, I can be doing that if I want to. Mm -hmm. um, but what is happening right now is that the projects I want to support is, are very specific. You know, it's like have to be done, have to has to have has to be for the commons, for the benefit of the commons or the company. So it has to be mission oriented. And it has to have holo chain or currency design somewhere in their in their system. And so that way, if I see the opportunity and the opportunity is there for the projects to pay us, I'm happy to get paid as a company, of course. Um, but many of these projects don't have the money. They're just starting, they're little their startups they're growing stronger you know so but if, if you're i guess within what you're doing if if you can either show them how to make money can they make money with these like if you're setting them up with a like can't you come up with some sort of uh community commons communication center that organizes the whole community and is using the hollow chain and the currency that you come up with and come up with a model that works for any community. And then you're just custom designing it and tweaking it of what you do. That's your service, right? But can't, can't you have something at the community level and then you just go to every community on the planet? Well, you know, I, yeah, I don't know if you remember, but I launched a community currency in Tepoztlan in 2008. It's quite a some, it's quite a work to launch a currency. It's a lot of work. You know, people think that they can just launch a currency. It's not about the technology. It's the social part that is right. the most difficult to do. I mean, you can have a technology that manages. First, you have to design it, and then you mm -hmm. have to implement it. So it's like two years at least if they're very grounded and they really have their own trust and reputation. I'm small, we're two people. So my, you know, it's like I could grow that way. But for, for me, it's like I have other other passions as well that I'm, you know, in, more in my in myself. And what we do is like currency design. We like designing, implementing, helping you implement, going by hold your hand and uh, help you. You know, like with just one organics, we're doing that and we're going to do it all the way. But he has to wait. He has to get money for his. We designed the currency constellation with five different currencies because our definition is very, very different. And that's because our design is very different. So to give you an example, the currency constellation for that food system is an asset back mutual credit, a keep on. Which well, is wait, a cool let, let me write these down. The asset back. Asset backed credit. Asset backed cryptocurrency, which is an it's a mutual credit. That's the that's the mutual credit systems are the the basis of our design. Okay. Because it's what it says, mutual credit. People giving credit to each other, and so if you are backing that with food, then you're pretty good. Um, like Colo, for example, is building an asset backed currency be, be, backed by computing power. That's called Holofuel. Okay. So that's so, another currency. So you can uh, back design. it. With, you can back it with a software system. Well, with with an asset, with an asset. Uh, the asset in this case, in, in the case of Holo, is uh, computing power because in, the model of Holo is that each of us holds the internet. So you is like with Airbnb, you ask them to to spare a little bit of their computing power of their computers, their space to be able to rent it so that you host a little piece of the Internet and you get paid. So the asset is the computing power. And that comes from the individuals. So a host and we have hollow ports that you can you so that you don't use your computer so you connect it and then you're part of a network 
and then you'll be hosting and then you'll be getting paid every month for hosting a little piece of the internet and you get paid in Holofuel. Developers and other people that use servers, like we all use servers, are gonna be paying in dollars, in fiat money, and that goes to the hosts. So it's uh, for, you know, you need money reserves and so it's a whole design and it's, um, the mechanics for the food currency are a little different. So we start with a coupon, which is, we call it coupon because instead of spending it right away, you're incentivized to keep it. And you're incentivized to keep it because you're paying for the regenerative agriculture and a regenerative agriculture economic engine. That's what you're doing when you buy your, your coupon. Your coupon, you buy food with it, but what it supports is the is the, the creation of these economic engines that will, which mission is to support farmers into regenerating soil. So you stay with the coupons and after a while you can convert them into jewels. Jewels is, is the next currencies it's a mutual credit and you grow with the currency and we're going to support farmers with that because we're going to buy them by just one organics can buy their seconds what when the market cannot will not buy because it's not perfect food or whatever and what they do is that they get that food just one organics gets that food and gentle dries it and it preserves it, Nate, its vibrancy, its flavor, its nutrition. It's like you can store it for many, many years. You can um, store it in community centers so that if there's a disaster, they have food that is like vegetables and organic vegetables and fruits without any other shit in them, just the fruit, just the vegetable. And that allows for, you know, food security. So they, they, uh, work on food security, um, waste, uh, regenerative, regenerative soils and health. Because as we know, health people, it's not about zero hunger. It's about zero hunger with quality food that really nurtures you. You know, what's the point of giving people food that is poison? So it's like, the, um, so that's the, the mission. And then there's a regenerative certification that is tied to those currencies where farmers are going to be better paid if, uh, depending on the quality of their soil. So they get incentivized by, of growing good soil and with the mutual credit, they can have a credit and a contract that they can sell their seconds and part of their firsts to just one organics. And so they get credit, they get reputation and depends on what kind of farmer we want to be able to create trading hero cards. And we want to make hero cards out of the farmers where farmers are shown, you know, how old the family farmer has been, what kind of land they have, what they grow, what they're passionate about. So like, we want to be able to, to, to contribute to, the, to, to, to creating um, the farmer um, the farmer vocation as an incredible hero, heroic, beautiful vocation. Uh, and not just like, oh, whatever, we give you the sense to grow your food and thank you for putting all your money and mortgaging your house. And if there's a rain, sorry, you lost your house. And, you know, to feed us, it's just ridiculous. So it really goes into the, into the center of changing uh, local food systems. And just one organics can scale globally. Globally, there could be gentle drying centers everywhere in the world, doing that and buying food locally, and um, it has a lot of market potential and blah 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 blah. So that's an example of a food currency. We've done that with energy, and we're doing that with computing power, and we want to do that with housing, with transportation, with. Um, and with reputation currencies. We really want to launch more reputation currencies that can help us move into a post-monetary world. So just to go back on, you said food security, waste, health, and what was the fourth one? Regenerating soil. The microbiome. Uh. 
mean, those certainly are at the essence of human existence. Boy, you are you are focusing on the leverage point of the planetary flow system. I know. And I'm the chief harmony officer of Unified Field Corporation and just one organics. So my time is divided in between Common Sending, Coventina Foundation. I'm the chairman of the board and and uh, just one organics. So can you say the foundation name again? Coventina. Coventina. What, what you know as Scepter. Scepter is the scepter of the king, right? So we, we chose the name scepter because of receptors that are part of nature, but nobody gets it. Everybody thinks, and because Arthur Brock is the creator and he's such a king, he's like the king archetype all the way through and through. So people imagine the scepter of the king and we just wanted to get out of that. We wanted to get into female driving these drivers and female design for technology and really our technology is based upon receptivity it's based upon expressive capacity it's based upon organic growth and biomimicry so it's very feminine technology so we needed to we need to move scepter out of scepter and into coventina so it's going to be called coventina framework all the technology and the first stack of that technology is holochain and hollow is just is the financial backbone and it's a company um, that will hopefully grow and grow and grow so it can support us all um, and a lot of people. Um, so the, the Coventina Foundation, Eric Harrisban and Arthur Brock are really very generous people and they had options for, for Holochain because they're the, they're the founders. And they put those found for options inside of the Coventina Foundation. And with that, we have a collateral that we can work with to bring lenders in that can put money so that we can invest in, in these companies that the common engine is gonna help accelerate. So we we couple with them. That's why I'm not I'm not very focused on wanting to sell services because my business model is to support Coventina in its growth. And so, you know, is, if I have a project, that project needs currency design, Commons Engine can give that currency design or that implementation if they want to, they don't have to, uh, but we can do other things. We can do content creation, we can do culture, we can do, you know, a lot of services that we can offer, we can uh, do met impact metrics with them. We can, you know, anyways, we're, we're finding out what are those functions that Coventina Foundation can do and what are the functions that they don't want to do. And so part of those functions, not all of them, but part of those functions Common Sending can do. And so that's what we are kind of aligning ourselves towards. Uh, to be able to to fulfill. Wow, I mean, you're again the the accuracy of your niche, and the uh, and the I guess again like the engine in any machine is the core thing that makes it work. So, I mean, if if you ha it's, it's like you're building a heart for the community, and everything can build around that, but to to focus on building that heart is a uh, say quite a brilliant focus thank you well done thank you thank <laughs> you but, but my bliss is culture elijah it's always been i love i love currencies and that's cool but you know i can take people so far in currency design the genius mind in the currency design world is arthur so we work very close together like uh, if I was to advise anyone on any currency design, I could advise them, I could help them, I could bring them into certain aspects and then I have to bring in Arthur and then I can take it in implementation in the social, in those aspects, you know, which are as important and balanced. Um, but working with Unified Field Corporation has been such a blessing because I've been able to to fulfill my desire, my aspirations for growing a culture from zero. Unified, and Unified field? Unified field. And, and the, the company, the brand is just one organics. And Unified field is my love. I, I just, 
you know, if I had to stay with just one gig, I would probably stay with Unified Field. Well, that's if I had to, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I love Coventina and I love the common singing. They fulfill different parts of my heart. I do. Yeah, they do. But the, because they're common all singing, mass- yeah. I'm just saying that they're all massive projects. It's like uh, each one of them is a lifetime of work, right? Each one of them could take all your time. So yeah, yeah. Organize your time and flow and intuitive desires must be quite a, <clears throat> quite a, uh, an intelligence. Yes, thank you for acknowledging that. I don't think many people do. It's a lot of intelligence because it takes a lot of, when you're invested in something and you can really go very deep, but then bang, the next hour you have to shift, you know, which by the time, by the way, which time is it? Okay. And then the next hour you have to shift and the next hour you have to shift. And then, you know, so I had to accommodate myself and I do foresee that in some time I probably would have to give the common sending the directorship to someone else. Um, right now it's not the time. I have to organize it and hold it. And um, I'm fine with that. And Commons and Coventina Foundation, um, I'm chairman of the board, so I uh, literally I, I would have to, I could do less, but right now is not the, the time because the, the specific function that I'm doing, what I'm learning is leadership, right? I'm mentoring and leadership and, and personal knowledge management and so how to be careful in execution and detail and then how to, how to give those flows and empower people and, and uh, design and architect, you know, the things. But for that, I need I need the the ears of the CEOs by my side so I can really focus and do my work, like my visionary and strategic work. Mm. And that's what I love doing. That's what I love doing. I'm really good convening. I'm really good, you know. With and with uh, with Unified Field, I'm stoked. I'm working with blue collar workers. You know that. I'm working in, um, my model is decentralized, this, no, is uh, DDOs, which is a deliberately developmental organization. So it's based upon saying, hey, you all have weaknesses, right? We all do? Yes, let's hide them. No, not true. Let's not hide them. Let's stop hiding them. It's such a job to be hiding your weaknesses. Let's expose them and let's support each other with those weaknesses. But guess what? It's gonna be painful. It's birthing, it's development. You can't run from it. This is going to be a personal development camp that you're paid for, but you have to be ready and you have to be willing and you have to be willing for radical truth and you have to be willing to address all your limitations and maybe even be humiliated once in a while because you'll be recognizing when you do shit and you won't be punished, you won't be shamed, you won't be blamed, but you but the truth is gonna be is gonna be said, it's gonna be named, you're gonna know. Wait a second here. That's not a term I think in Canada that we use. What the, is uh I think I, wit like witnessing is that like witnessing yourself? Am I witnessing this this thing on me and now I've gotta yeah bring attention to it and go yeah. Okay, and now I'm wasting, I, I've broken up the conversation because I've yeah, witnessed myself. Exactly. But it's like, exactly, let's let's cover it. So let's put a, a little thumb in it so you don't have to. <laughs> or let's just help you to clean it. Okay, is that, so is that what witnessing is? Like bring your witness out? Well, it's like, it's like when you recognize um, what you recognize is that if you identify a learning edge, to give you concrete examples, um, I have someone that had the learning edge of being too small for the job that she was given. She didn't have the skills that she thought she had. She said she had. And then she had to, you know, gossip started. 
And then we said, no, we can allow gossip. So you really have to do this differently. You have to give her feedback. But instead of us telling people, give her feedback, she said, I'm going to ask for feedback, truth feedback, truthful feedback. And she did that like a warrior S. And people were giving her really good feedback and she grew stronger. You know, she was about to lose her job. Everybody said, fire her, fire her, fire her. You would ask everybody, they would say, fire Raynisha, fire her. And then she stood up, she took the feedback, she went into her right place, man. We work a lot with alignment. You know, it's a practice that we have that 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 I can share. And it's one of our core practices. And we reached a point of realignment with her. And then and now she's growing and glowing and growing stronger. And she's the beacon of truth. People know that when Rainisha is coming to you is because she's going to be true to you. You know, she's not going to hold back. She's going to be kind, but she'd rather be supporting and challenging than kind. And, and that's a growth, right? That's a growth. Or someone that was terrified about receiving feedback because they've been in a company where receiving feedback had always been horrible for him. And he was kind of traumatized by that. So we, you know, everybody comes with their own doses of trauma. We, you won't have someone that is trauma-free, you know. I, we work with people that have considered amount of stuff in their lives, like being homeless, growing homeless, you know, growing, and, and we support them. And they're just like glowing and shining. And that's because they're loved. They're deeply loved. And right now they're building a little self-management group and then, um, where they could be peers with each other. And it's just so beautiful to see and how that works because it's really about, you know, giving them our full heart and um, growing with them. Sounds like you're, you're, you've gone from the theoretical uh, down, scaled up into the larger species level leverage points, then down to the organizational at the community level of supporting those flows and then down to the individual level <clears throat> with the real processes to have human uh, development within their own psyches. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. amazing to hear and to, especially in such a short time, um, yeah, I have great so people working with me. I have great people working with me. That's why I can do it. Like my, the person that helps me design all the governance systems and the organizational architecture, Greg or Greg Cassell, I couldn't do it without him. He's a genius. You know, we work together, but he's 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 like you. I mean, he's a mapper. He's a systems guy. He can map things and he can just, not in the way that you do it because you do it through through design of games and recognition and a different skill set. He's like, he's an incredible documenting, Whoa. documenting and writing process. Wow. He's like accurate, you know, and he's like, he can go to reaching incredible levels of detail and then simplicity out of that. And, and so he's kind of my right hand in organizational architecture. And so he helped me develop the systems. And and David, uh, the CEO, he's a, he's he's a full-hearted person. He just opens up everyone, and he listens, and he's humble, and he, you know, he wants this for people. And so and he invests in culture, and he doesn't go like, no, culture is not important. Let's focus on the doing. You know, he gives people power. And, and so that is essential. Otherwise, you don't go anywhere. Mm. For sure. I mean, having people operating at your level and having those gifts aligned in such a manner that you're, you're, you're allowing, you know, each person to put their piece of the puzzle in without having to bring it down or get intimidated or overwhelmed by it, right? Like, it, that must be very, uh, very nice. Yes. Yes. So what's, I, I think we're, what is it? You, you're probably on a tight schedule that I feel like I was get, probably given an hour and, and then you're, you're gonna have to go back to your, your life. Um, well, I, I have until 9.15 and then my, cause my, well, 9.15 would be 15 minutes more. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, just checking. <laughs> yeah, and we can meet again. Yeah, well, we had a hard time getting going. It was <laughs> technology. <laughs> that, that, was, that was pretty funny to me. That was hilarious. It's like trying, it's like two people trying to open a door to get into a room in the, in the offline world that both doors are locked and they have the wrong key and they, <laughs> yeah, it's everything true. that can go wrong goes wrong. It's true. And then you open and there's no room. Right. <laughs> Where's everybody? <laughs> so yeah. how's your daughter doing? Ah, oh, she's the delight of my life. She's incredible. She's 19. She and her boyfriend, her 37 year old boy boyfriend. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she gets bored with the young ones. What can I tell you? So, and he's incredible. He's, he's incredible. And, you know, they're both bought a, a school bus and they transform it into an RV. And they have their own company called IRL in real life, which is uh, they're building um, um, a social recognition uh, platform for skills and knowledge transmission what? based upon guilds. And, what? you know, so they're like, they're starting, they're, you know, in their ideation design stage. Um, but they build the whole bus themselves. So they're both makers. They live in a farm. Um, they're going to go to the mushroom farm, which is an incredible farm in California, 763 acres, where they're building an amazing project of regenerative agriculture and, and a regenerative park. And it's in front of the ocean. It's 700 acres of land. And we're going to go meet there in mid-November. And... Um, She's doing spectacular. She's I'm, she's not school material. She doesn't understand why people go to school, uh, but she's building something around education. <laughs> Where people educate each other, you know, and transmit knowledge with each other and intergenerational. And so she's seeing her own journey, but she's gaining a lot of skill sets for homesteading. You know, she can go and, get a roadkill and and clean it and open it and eat it you know she's she can do that you know she can she can farm she can build she can make her own clothes she can you know she's a maker she's, she's a 19? maker she's 19 and she's gorgeous oh my god is she's gorgeous and it's so funny because he's like so simple you know like hat and t-shirt same one if it can every day and and she's like a lady you know she likes tight dresses and very nice and leather and she likes to put her hats and be fancy and you know she's always impeccable in her makeup and her hair and, and but she's at the same time she can roll her sleeves and just like crack a you know give birth to a to a goat you know <laughs> Man, that must be so wonderful to watch. Yeah. No, that's she's 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 the, truly her heart. Her heart is so. She's so humble. She's so beautiful. She's, you know, it's just painful to watch how this generation is so scared, so frightened about the future, and we cannot just go and tell them it's all gonna be okay. Because we don't know. We don't know. We have to be honest. We don't know. Mm. So most of her friends are not doing as she's doing. I tell you that. Mm. And she suffers, of course. She goes with a lot of insecurity of these times, right? These guys, I mean, we our house in Oregon was in talent in the town that just burned in these last fires. Wow. Our favorite taqueria burned, you know, our favorite community place burned, our friends lost their houses, at least six, seven of them, you know, when our house got evacuated, it didn't burn, but it was, it was evacuated. It's not our house, we rented it, but 
she was in there. She was not in that house, but she was in the region. So she's seen, you know, she's gone out of evacuation while propane tanks are exploding and everything's on fire and cars are on fire and houses are on fire. You know, she's been having to evacuate twice in her lifetime. She's been in the middle of the COVID. She's, you know, we lost friends and family we you know she's she's leaving that at the core and 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 it's it's just hard elijah i don't i really don't know if we're gonna make it people are so stupid our government is so stupid I, you know it's like every time i like i watch like here they're oh anyways don't get me going and i'm preaching to the choir because you know all this <laughs> but isn't that the if there's a fine line in the sand or the the, the difference between the, the growing polarities, one each side might be saying it's an intelligence thing. But I, I, I think that it's like the people that are going along with that government story, the, the people that aren't are looking at them as insane and the ones who are going along with it are looking at the other guys as insane because the, 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 the chasm of belief is getting so large that you know you, you essentially you know the mindset of not questioning and the mindset of not having a, enough critical mind to truly understand what's going on you know really distinguishes you know kind of like zombies from critical thinkers yeah and if you call the zombie a zombie like they don't particularly like that and and they <laughs> they, they and they and whatever <laughs> argument they're using you know, it's, it's like zombie language and it just, it's very close to human language, but when you really get to some thread, there's nothing there of scientific real evidence. They say they do, but the, the numbers are so skewed and the methodologies are so skewed and it, and it because it always yeah. comes down to some design, right? That isn't good for us. Yeah. Yeah. And so, because it's that way, we're following the zombies. Isn't that what's going on? I mean, yesterday they said they were going to close the island of Lanai because it has, oh my God, 20 cases. Let's close the island. We have 20 cases. I mean, it's like, you're really doing this. Okay. And then, you, you, you know, I read the comments and people are like, yeah, close the island, protect it. And then like, people, pro, we, our, our health system is going to crash. I mean, with 20 people, you didn't even have one hospitalized. If you have 10% of that, you'll have two. You're you kidding me. Are you going to block a whole economy because of 20 people? Are you that stupid? And, and you don't care about those two people. It's like... Honestly, I care. I lost people. It's nature. It's nature. We have to go through this somehow. I just don't know when it's going to end. <laughs> well, by the Mayan calendar, supposedly we're on a down spiral and September of next year. And if you look at the trajectory we're going, like, like we, we still got a long way to bottom out and then it goes back up again. But I, I was thinking that, you know, it's kind of like, you're going in the in the roller coaster ride, and when you're down in that, you know, terror, you think it's always going to be that way, while you're in yeah. it, right? Like it's it's yeah. it's this momentary yeah. feeling that kind of lasts for weeks or months, and you're thinking, oh my god, like the, the greater fear is going. Is this the way it's going to be forever? But if you know that you're going to get off the ride, or if you know that okay, this is this is just the the, the zombies get to control this for three years or four years more, and then hopefully the zombies get thrown off the ride because they, they've made things so insane that we finally rose up as a species because it, it couldn't get any stupider, like to be socially distant, not hugging your, your closest loved ones and wearing a mask that's stopping you from breathing and being in a, a classroom of 30 kids wearing masks, they're tearing them off and running around and everyone's going crazy. Or you cough or you sneeze somewhere and they look at you like, oh my God, we're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I haven't had a lot of experience of that here in my week because we had very little cases. They did close the island, which for me, I mean, is stupid because you crash the economy, but at the same time it kept the island. It was blissful. 
been in this paradise with no one at the beach? Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, bring it on, just like take the tourists away. The last week though, we received 50,000 people, the last week. And now they're saying, we're, we're a mask in the beach, assholes. And I was like, sad. Anyways, I want to hear about you and I want to hear where, where there's connection. I mean, Le Ciel could be one, but I don't know. We have to explore. But, you know, you directly, I want to hear how you, you said about the onboarding. I want to hear where have you advanced with the systems that you created. I want to hear what's been going on for you, how you grow. I want to hear any, everything. Should yeah, we do same minutes. time, same time next week? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Because um, it, it does seem... It's weird because timing, right? And you never really know the true timing of something. And at every step of the way, you know, the mind or, or your own perceptions are thinking this has to happen or this has to happen, but you don't know all the forces around you that maybe are making it impossible. But, you know, I, I find that, you, you know, for me, there's this kind of like, put your head against the wall and keep going. And the wall is moving me back, but I don't quite know because my head keeps hitting the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not willing to kind of open my eyes, turn and maybe move at all. I'm just kind of, <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm not getting anywhere. Why are why'd you guys help? <laughs> but meanwhile, you know, draw some map of another thing that didn't work. And, and um, but yeah, I, I guess like in eight years, when you really look at what has occurred, like for me, it, I guess, and maybe we're the same way that the pace is so slow or the setback seems so big and the resources don't seem enough that you don't feel you're getting anywhere. But then, you you know, when, when I hear you and go, holy cow, I mean, you didn't just get somewhere. You, 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 you got there where you were aiming and more. But again, I guess every piece of the puzzle, again, rarely matches what you really thought it was going to be. And, and, and that interaction with humans and that dance of shadows and that and the, 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 the distance between the ideal and the real. And then and how- the the Yeah, and the results are still not there. I mean, Holo hasn't gone stronger. It could still disappear. Um, you know, Holo chain probably not because it's an open source technology that it would leave even if we, you know, we dis all disappear, Holo chain will probably be there. Um, just one organics <clears throat> every month we still don't have our big investment so we don't are, we have 17 product products it's gorgeous you can get them in the shop but people don't understand our food yet we don't have marketing capacity um, I'm your marketing capacity so it's like you know wearing all these hats and I can do it but it's not my mastery so it's just I can just keep it alive, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and every month that thing cost us $50,000 to sustain it and $50,000 to sustain it. That's your We've been putting, rate. that's our burn rate. For organics? And that's or? For just one organics, that's our burn rate. I can not, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, sometimes I get money, sometimes I don't get money. I mean, I, I'm good because I have the common sending, so I still have money, uh, but I cannot charge common sending for the work I don't do. I have to charge it for the work I do do. So yeah. I'm working insane amount of hours. And, and so it's not by any means where we want to be. You know, I see that David, the CEO, cannot go like that any long, a lot longer. You know, it's, it's just his sacrifice, his level of carrying the stones up the mountain, are, it's insane. There's no way I could do what he does. And if anything happens to him, like gone, you know, everything would be gone. I cannot sustain that company right now by myself. There's no way. There's no way I want it, you know. <laughs> Why would I want to have that responsibility of paying $50,000 a month? <clears throat> I mean, I'm part of the looking for investment, but with $1.8 million, we get totally to the other side even with another gentle drying center and you know and we were so close so close so close but it doesn't come doesn't come doesn't come so it's not that you know like yeah i reached i think i passed a threshold and then i went up and then i reached as we reached a certain plateau of a space where if we don't we don't move 
you know, we're at risk, we're at risk, we're at risk. And at the same time, I look and they put a billion dollars in the fucking Notre Dame Cathedral. Come on, people. Come on, people. You know, and Amazon, our lungs are getting devastated and you put the money in a church. Are you fucking kidding me? It's sad. Well, well not just that. I mean, it's like, were there 100 million out of work or the amount that of the trillion billionaires becoming richer and the middle class being destroyed, small business being destroyed, like with amongst that, like that's why like the, the, the focus point I'm working on just to the last second before I go is- I actually that, can stay, I can stay 10 minutes, but then I really have to go. So I won't have a, a, a time in between meetings, but it's okay, okay. I have my tea okay. and then- well, just the, to design your ideal job, like to me, the, the the difference of the, here, let me get this other map. I love this ability just to change the background and get the- I know you're having fun. This is, um, oh, wow. So that to me for the inflow matrix is the main simple distinction. And so to me, what you're talking about is you're moving people into the new paradigm and, and at least, you know, what I've been working on are, are maps to simplify the movement of people from one to the other. And this one, you know, is the first one to sort of distinguish it. I love it. I love it. You know, the project of my kid, she started a, a non-for-profit, it's called the Ikigai Project. And you know what Ikigai means, right? Hmm. Yeah, ideal Ikigai. Job your dream no your sweet spot yeah yeah and she started in real life because she thought that she had to help people um recognize her passion and purpose and that that was the first thing she wanted to do perfect so to me when you now if you look this way and you place your maps, now you're building your future into this container. So this is the larger container. And when you start to use the other maps, you're starting to segment the new sphere off, but you're basically taking you know, the whole mind and giving it a whole new sort of methodology of constructing and designing con you know, mind maps and cognitive uh, designs of whatever you want. And so you know, I seem to have tools that are on top of the map layer, because with the card sets and the different conversation types, right? You can, yeah. uh, did you have you found those or are those still hidden somewhere? Oh my god, it's, I've been moving from Mexico to Ashland to Bokhorn to Talent to Hawaii. Yeah. So many things have been lost in the way, <laughs> including all my grandmother's furniture. So don't feel bad about it. <laughs> Well, 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 we'll have to, to see about getting you another set, perhaps. And uh, I want another set, yes. Uh -huh. So, you know, I like the simplicity of that. And I like that. Well, I don't not necessarily like that, but I see that how it's useful to have this middle point being like this eye of the needle where we seem to be passing. But then once you pass that, it opens up yeah. into more and more and more love and more and more generativity. Yeah. So it feels like that that fear is like very degenerative, and then it goes into that point where it has to transform, and it's like it feels small, but it's like a vortex, right? It has to be vortex that then opens. Otherwise, you wouldn't open up to the to the new paradigm and love and future. Mm, exactly, and you know, it's the eye of the needle, right? It's it's the you, know, you can't get there bringing all your ideas about money and currency and wealth through there you have to yeah so, yeah so for i guess for me the the uh figuring which map goes where i've done some online training with people to see where you know I was teaching one map at a time and then having that team sort of manifest their vision months later and then them inviting me in to sort of teach a little bit more to show this is what we put in our maps and this is it, it occurred. And that was just by teaching teams online four at a time. 
to the Planetary Guardian Media Team. And you know, that, that was the beginning of me testing again the mark is what I've done is I've done a lot of testing of a little bit, but then I sort of, I don't know about you, because I, I think you dive into bigger projects for longer periods of time, but I, I just dive in and, and kind of get whacked a lot <laughs> and then kind of go back into research mode and go back yeah. into realizing, okay, that's what's missing out there. That's what's missing here. And there's a lot of catch up I got to do in terms of just documentation, finishing the maps, learning how to edit. Like like you, I have five major projects, right? I have like the inflow matrix, I have the new paradigm toolkit, I have the school of conscious communication, planetary guardians media game, and the very secret plan, you know, tying it all together. But those, each one of those projects is is massive. And then when when we speak as sort of like originators, <clears throat> I find that the uh, connection point has to really take into account each person's context and right. goals and desires and everything, right? And sort of, I think that alignment comes when you truly bring those together and, and go through the process of understanding what they are. And I think for probably both of us, we're far better at assessing someone's context a lot quicker and assessing kind of where someone's coming from because if you don't, you're going to really miss the boat in terms of how you can communicate and, and where those connection points are going to come in. Um, so next time that we meet, can we then go to those places and the tools and, you know, because <clears throat> it's very different where I'm now to where I was. So before it was like, oh, maybe my teams will have to adopt it. Well, no, in just one, if I bring a, if I bring a tool, they play it. They dance at my rhythm. <laughs> mm. You know, they do. And they trust me. That's why they dance at my rhythm, because they trust me. So I want to know what is possible. But also, probably Coventina Foundation, you know, we need, oh, this is a beautiful bird. Um, um, Coventina Foundation, I want to see how to onboard people, how to accelerate. There's, there's challenges, there's a lot of challenges there, mm. you know, like to wake up people. The bigger narratives are a challenge, how to onboard them, how to assess them, how to, what are the tools that would help them accelerate and with the minimum amount of time. And, um, you know, all those are like open questions right now for us. And Common Singing can do some of that and we'll do some of that. Uh, but that assessment, many times the assessment is helping them mirror, you know, is bringing a mirror so they can see themselves mm. and see where is that they, they want to grow, what is the things that are lacking. There's a lot of good spirit and good projects like, you know, Hilo or Junto or Homer or that are growing stronger and they all have their own systems. They all have their own cultures. They're all growing in their own pace. They believe on follow chain. They're already creating their projects. You know, I might be doing a media cohort because, because we have four projects that are using follow chain that would be Zero, um, Homer, Junto and Hilo that are social network community projects, they already have tech, all of them. They are in, in they had to refactor to Holochain, which is part of why I wanna ask Coventina Foundation, give them money. But I can give them money for the finishing the technology, that doesn't make them successful. You know, that doesn't mean that people are going to adopt it because we like being zombies. And we, even though we see social dilemma and hackers this, and we see all that happens with our data, we just keep like, oh shit, that's really bad. Let's keep using this technology. Oh, migration, no, are you kidding me? Migration, I mean, this is not as sexy as Facebook. It's not as, you know, easy and playful. And my mama isn't there. You know, so there's a lot that we have to 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 see in the meta level. You know, the meta level. If you have a cohort of people of community of current of, of group, let's say the media one that has a common ground and a common ground on technology and a common ground on 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 on, on there's alignment, right? Mm -hmm. um, the technology stack they're using, they could support them. There's licensing and different different things of law that have legal that has to they have to research together because it's not the same legal system. Revenue mm -hmm. models because you're 
you're not going to live from ads and from selling data from people. So there's a lot of things that, that a cohort could be supporting each other with. For sure. Um, that, that how to do that in a way that it's, is the best way, you know, the, the best way would be the simplest way, <laughs> but I, I don't know if that's even possible. I might just be a dreamer. I have to go, my love. Okay. But um, see you next Friday. Yeah, I, uh, I look forward to it. And this has been a wonderful conversation and, and so good to see you again. Okay, let's communicate with Messenger and see how I receive my cards. Okay. I would be happy to buy them. Oh my God. <laughs> silly. You're silly. It's good to see you, Elijah. It's great to see you. Much love.